Hello ladies and gentlemen, Phone Scoop here. What you're taking a look at there is an unopened BlackBerry Storm 2. What we're going to do is unbox it for you and then we'll take a uh, quick look at the uh, Storm 2's features and we'll also compare it to the original Storm. So without further ado, let's dig in. I've got a uh, plain black box here. Not much going on. Probably not a final retail box. In fact, I'm sure it's probably just a sample that they sent to uh, people in the press, such as myself. Um, we'll open it up, and we can see the uh, Storm 2 is in there. Uh, not very securely fastened. Resting there. We've got a, a little cardboard piece here. We've got a charger in this box. We've got a uh, USB cable, and we've got stereo headphones, so um, not bad, you know. Definitely have seen um, more accessories come in a box. Uh, there's not even a user manual in here, so this is uh, definitely not a final consumer, um, you know, consumer box. So not a whole lot going on with that. So since there's not a lot of interesting things in the box, let's take a look at the phone itself. There it is, the Storm 2 from uh, Research in Motion. Let's dive in and see what it's all about. At first glance, the uh, Storm 2 looks almost identical to the original Storm. Uh, almost uh, nearly the same in shape, uh, layout configuration, um, size, and weight. Uh, we've got, you know, similarly placed buttons and hardware and um, Basically, I mean, you can you can see for yourself the similarities are are pretty stark. But concentrating on the Storm 2, you can see that the entire front panel is now uh, one large button. There's no uh, separation here between the buttons along the bottom. Uh, these are four distinct keys um, on the face of the uh, the glass that uh, the capacitive screen there. Taking a look at the rest of the phone, uh, you can see on the left here we've got just a uh, application key. This key is actually a little bit mushy, uh, but it has a rubber uh, rubber top to it, so it's easily uh, found with your thumb. We have the micro USB port there. Um, nothing along the bottom. On the right, we've got several different keys. We've got a uh, user-definable application key here. You can use this to launch the camera, to launch the email program, pretty much whatever you want. And we've got a volume toggle here. Um, this also feels a little bit mushy, but again, it's coated in rubber and is, is easy to find with your thumb. On the back, you can see we have the 3.2 megapixel camera as well as a flash to help uh, make for better picture taking. And a little bit difficult to see in the top, uh, but they've sort of switched things around. Looks like the power key is here now, uh, before it was on the front face of the phone. Uh, my guess is this uh, doubles as a uh, power and lock key. And we've got the ever-present silent switch to, uh, to turn off the ringer uh, with, uh, you know, when you've got an incoming call. And as with the, uh, the original, we'll peel this back. And you can see we've got a SIM card here for use on uh, GSM networks overseas. And the uh, slot for the micro SD card goes there. So this is uh, pretty similar to the original um, in most respects, but just some subtle changes. And of course, uh, you'll notice different accents. You've got silver on the original and, and black on, on the new one. And, uh, you know, like the buttons here are silver, the buttons here are black. And, uh, but otherwise, you know, for all intents and purposes, it looks almost identical. Oh, and of course, forgot to mention the 3.5 millimeter headset jack here uh, on the top right of the phone for your stereo headset listening pleasure. So now that we've taken a uh, quick scan of the hardware, let's uh, dive in and see if RIM made any changes to the software on the Storm 2. So after playing with the Storm 2 for just a few moments off camera, I can say immediately and without any doubt that it is a uh, far superior product to the original Storm that was released back in uh, November of 2008. Perhaps the most noticeable and biggest improvement will be just the regular performance of the device, how it reacts. Um, you can see instantaneous uh, reaction to my finger as I move across it and uh, make selections and try to, uh, to interact with the phone. We've also got some nice animations for uh, you know opening applications and uh, you can just see it's just blazing fast. It, it responds really well to my thumb and the way I touch. 
Now, of course, this screen still is a SurePress screen. There are four actuators under the screen uh, compared to the single actuator that was under the screen on the original Storm, and that makes it more responsive uh, to presses and better able to localize where you're exactly pressing on the screen itself. So, for example, we will uh, we will type a message. We'll type a new message to uh, to myself here, and uh, you can see as I brought this up that it is um, has this SurePress style QWERTY keyboard. You know, we've already sent two messages here. I'm going to just uh, quickly type up another one, and you can see how well the storm responds to typing um, compared to the original. So. There, it uh, figured out its phone scoop pretty well. There, got it right. You know, I typed, this is a much better phone uh, than the original. And, of course, if you want to interact with a full QWERTY, uh, you can just turn it sideways, and, uh, and it works just the same. And uh, hitting the return key will send off the email. Um, you know, and you can type this way, too, so we'll... This is how you type in landscape mode. So yeah, okay, so I made one mistake, but, uh, but otherwise not bad at all. We've got smileys here that we can uh, dump in there. We can uh, put in anything we want, and uh, off it goes. So it, the typing experience, I, I can't stress enough, is vastly, vastly improved compared to the original Storm. Uh, the screen itself doesn't t need to travel as far for each uh, successive click, and because of that, your thumbs get less tired when typing. And of course, you can see how quickly it reacts to, uh, to being turned on its side. It reacts almost instantly. Uh, with the other storm, the original storm, you sometimes had to wait up to five seconds for the thing to react. Um, you know, we've got the same access to all the media here. Uh, media player looks about the same. You've got songs, you've got videos. Looks like they've loaded some trailers in there. Back out to the main screen. Uh, we will uh, jump into the main menu. You've got all the typical controls and Verizon uh, applications here. They've preloaded Slacker, it looks like, and um, Vcast Rhapsody, Vcast Song ID, My Verizon, which is an account controlling program, uh, its own mapping program that's not Google Maps there. They've got VZ Navigator here, of course. Um, instant messaging, all here. You've got Windows, Yahoo, Google, AIM, and Blackberry Messenger. And uh, of course, you've got the camera. Downloads is where uh, anything you grab from the uh, um, BlackBerry apps where it'll go, and you can see some pre uh, preloaded applications. Of course, these are productivity-based applications, words to go, sheets to go, slides to go, so we can uh, interact with uh, work documents, and um, you know it's got some games on there, and uh, yeah, that's it. You know, it's a it's a much much better device. There's there's no other way to say it. It's uh, it's easier to use. It reacts as it's supposed to, and it feels better designed, more well thought out, and more refined when compared to the original Storm. So. Uh, the Storm 2, available from Verizon Wireless, packing 3G, uh, GSM for roaming on uh, European networks, Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, and a much better uh, operating system. Storm 2, Verizon Wireless. There it is, folks.